God is with us, and let the people say, here we find new life. Good morning and welcome to First Church of Christ in Simsbury. I'm Pastor George Harris. It's my pleasure to welcome you on this beautiful and a little bit warm Sunday morning. 
Um, always a joy to gather in worship with all of you. I'm joined this morning, as I often am, by Rev. Kev, Reverend Kevin Weichel, uh, Mark Mercier, the maestro Mark Mercier. I'm delighted to see Jim Martoccio back, and um, thank you for sharing your gift, Jim. Um, I know the Women's Praise is going to be singing this morning. I know Jonathan is back uh, behind the curtain, the wizard behind the curtain. Um, Ardell, as he always does, just prepares everything in advance and makes everything go smoothly. We thank our ushers. And most of all, I thank all of you for being here in worship. It is not worship without you, and that includes you in person and you who are joining us from home. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. I will talk a little bit more about that in my sermon, but it means no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. This is one of those Sundays in which we have multiple themes. This is a baptism Sunday. Woohoo! We're delighted to welcome the Hulkquist family for the baptism of Jasper. That's just fantastic. Uh, this is Pride Month, and it is also June tomorrow. I will be referencing both of those things in my sermon. And it's Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all the dads, to the granddads, to all who father someone who's beloved to you in your life. Being a father is the greatest privilege of my life, and I hope it is for you as well. In terms of all those themes, I thought of a comparison um, we sometimes have people over to our house, and my wife, Lourdes, will suggest a guest list, and I'll, my immediate reaction will be like, oh my gosh, we can't have all those people together. You know, they're, they're, they're all over the place. They, they won't know each other. They'll, they'll, some will maybe um, um, uh, offend one another somehow, and she says, don't worry about it. It'll all work out. And you know what? It always all works out. And so I'm sure that's the way it will be this morning with baptism and Pride and Juneteenth and Father's Day, it's going to be magnificent. The Spirit will move, and that's because of you. Let us now be together in prayer. God, who made us each and all, in your image, teach us to love ourselves as you love us. God, who made us in your image, allow us to show that image to the world. God, who made us in your image, help us to see your image in all those we meet. God, who made us in your image, teach us to nurture and protect all and each in your creation. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able for our call to worship. All you who delight in our kaleidoscopic creator, the holy takes on flesh in every gender and orientation, every race and ability, every body size and body type. Blessed are those who search for God among the lives of the oppressed, the betrayed, the turned away, and the condemned. Blessed are those who receive the glory, the gift of God, and the blessed among us. The sacred is with us. Let us worship and be transformed.
Friends, I would like to introduce you to Jasper Holquist. His baptism this morning, we are excited. Jasper is the brother of Nigel, and Jasper is the son of Andrew and Emily. Emily grew up here at First Church, was confirmed here at First Church, and Andrew grew up at the Second Congregational Church in Greenwich, and he was confirmed there. Uh, they met in Greenwich when Emily was working in Stamford and began attending that church together. Um, ironically, uh, one of our former senior ministers, Bob Naylor, was the pastor of that church at that time and married them, so they feel and have that connection. And soon, they will be celebrating 10 years of marriage, their 10-year anniversary, so congratulations, guys. Andrew is a social worker, and Emily is an urban planner, and they live in West Hartford and are looking forward to uh, their boys attending church school here this fall. They bring Jasper to be baptized this morning uh, for God's love and grace to be displayed out uh, for Jasper for today and for his whole life long. And we're doing so in the midst of this good church and all of you loving people. In the Gospel of Matthew, we find the story of people bringing children to Jesus in hopes that he might bless them. But the disciples rebuked the people for doing so. The disciples didn't think Jesus should be wasting his valuable time on lowly children. When Jesus heard what the disciples were doing, he was indignant and said to the disciples, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for such things belong to the realm of God. And Jesus took the children in his arms and blessed them. The story reminds us that the sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of God's grace. It is a sign that baptism is for all people of every age. Baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is a sign and the participation in God's love, the mark of membership into the church universal and the beginning of growth into full faith and discipleship. This morning we celebrate that Jasper is God's child filled with radiant possibility and deeply loved by God. So a few questions for Emily and Andrew. In bringing Jasper to be baptized, do you confess your faith in God as made known to you in and through Jesus Christ? If so, please say, we do. As his parents, do you promise by God's grace to be Christ's disciple and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best as you are able? And as he grows in your midst, will you encourage him to do the same? If so, say, we do. Do you recognize Jasper as God's child created with his own individual worth? Do you promise to love him as an affirmation of this truth? If so, say, we do. When you look at Jasper, will you try to see in him all the children of the world, children of all races and nations? And when holding him, will you remember God's love for all people? If so, say, we will. We will. And do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow with Jasper in the faith, to be faithful members of the church by celebrating Christ's presence, resisting oppression and evil, and by making daily life choices that affirm God's love and justice for all, so that one day Jasper may affirm and live out his baptism. If so, say, we do with the help of God. Sponsors, Brian, Kristen, Stephanie, are you ready to guide and encourage Jasper to offer your support, your love, your guidance, as he makes connections between his faith and his daily life, and to help him grow in the Christian faith? If so, play, please say, with God's help, we are. Thank you. And with the congregation, please stand as you're as able. To all of you who witness and celebrate this sacrament, promise your love, support, and care to Jasper as he lives and grows in Christ. If so, please say, we promise our love, support, and care. We promise our love, support, and care. You may be seated. The meaning of water at baptism is significant. God's spirit moved over the waters at creation. John the baptized, baptist, uh, baptized Jesus with water. Water means so many things, birth and death, washing, cleansing, forgiveness, life and growth. Water is both ordinary and extraordinary. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. It'll come. It'll come, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to, let's have a, a brief prayer, okay? Let's pray together. 
Blessed by your Holy Spirit, gracious God, this water, that it might symbolize your spirit washing over Jasper with your love. <laughs> Can you say Jasper's full name for us, knowing uh, that he is a unique creation of the divine? God knows us by name, so let us know Jasper's full name. <laughs> Jasper Glenn Wayne Holquist. Jasper Glenn Wayne Holquist. <laughs> I baptize you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Spirit be with you always and for everybody. Yes. <laughs> Amen. <Yeah. laughs> Let's sing our congregational song. <laughs> do, you want, do you want to walk up the aisle? Do you want to walk? Do you want to go for a walk up and down the aisle? Go ahead. On behalf of the congregation, we do want to present to you again to memorize uh, and commemorate this special day, uh, including a Bible and a candle that was made in the church school that you can light to celebrate the anniversary. And if you'd indulge me, also a blanket that was made for just such occasion. It includes the prayer. That may God's gaze be upon this baby blanket, warming, comforting, and enfolding, and embracing. May this mantle be a safe haven, a sacred place, a security and well-being. And may those who receive the blanket be cradled in hope, love, kept in joy, and swallowed in peace. And your certificate makes it all official. <laughs> You can have a seat and then we'll, we'll pray. We give you thanks, O Holy One, Mother and Father of us all, for Jasper and for the grace acknowledged here today in his baptism. Grant us grace to receive, nurture, and befriend him as a new member of your church universal and give to him strength for life's journey, courage in times of suffering, the joy of faith, the freedom of love, and the hope of new life. For Jesus' sake, amen. I invite you to join me in our unison prayer of confession. Loving God, sometimes we have dishonored ourselves and others in our longing to fit in and be accepted. At times we have rejected the individual of others. Sometimes the pressure to be popular leads us to bully ourselves and others. Occasionally we have been silent when we have witnessed people being dishonored because of their truth. Please change our hearts and help us to love our own humanity and the awesomeness of other humans. Please help us forgive ourselves for the harsh things that we have said and thought. Each person is a unique and beautiful expression of God's divine light and love. We confess that we forget this sometimes and pray that you help us to do better, starting now. Assuredly, God forgives us of all our wrongdoings, those we have committed consciously and unconsciously. Thank you, God, for your forgiveness. Let us forgive others as God continuously forgives us. Amen.
Now hear these words from the first chapter of Genesis. Then God said, let us make humans in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humans in God's own image. In the image of God, God created them. Male and female, God created them. May God bless these words. Yesterday afternoon, I had the pleasure of attending a community-wide Juneteenth celebration at Simsbury High School. For those who could use a refresher on the history of this celebration, Juneteenth celebrates emancipation of the slaves in the United States. Though the Emancipation Proclamation went into effect on January 1st, 1863, It did not reach all parts of the United States, uh, finally reaching Texas when federal troops arrived there on June 19, 1865, some two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation went into effect. So it is this June 19th day, Juneteenth, that is celebrated, has been long celebrated in the African-American community and just became a national holiday in 2021. So this celebration was co-sponsored by Simsbury, Canton, Avon, and Farmington. It was to be at Simsbury Meadows, but the weather did not cooperate. So it moved into the Simsbury High Auditorium. It was very festive, very educational, very interesting. I saw while I was there the Nikita Waller Band. Nikita Waller is the woman who leads the band and is its lead singer. Uh, They sang a number of pop and R&B numbers and in particular singing Bruno Mars's Treasure. Nikita went out into the audience as she sang and took the hand of a little boy and invited him up on stage with her. He was of an age, perhaps five years old, that he was not yet embarrassed and self-conscious about this, so he just followed her right on up. She then, as she continued to sing, invited him to go into the front row and invite another child up, which again he dutifully did and grabbed the hand of another boy so that the two of them were now on stage as Nikita sang. In fact, I thought this uh, Bible passage that Chris read during the baptism, let the children come to me, that's exactly the image I had. She was inviting the children to come to her up on the stage and continually singing to them, You are a treasure. You are a treasure. You are a treasure. And after she had repeated this refrain a number of times, she took the microphone and held it down to them and invited them to sing into the microphone, I am a treasure. I am a treasure. I am a treasure. I teared up. This is what every kid wants to hear, needs to hear. In fact, it's what all of us want to hear, what we yearn to hear is that we are treasures. 
And in fact, that is what the Bible passage from Genesis that I just read says. It says that we are all, every single one, created in God's own image. Not just some, not just certain kinds, not just this or that, but every one of us is created in the image of God. Every one of us is a treasure in God's sight. As I mentioned during my greeting, this is Pride Month the month we celebrate the treasure that is the LGBTQ community, that is lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and sometimes you see a plus sign added to encompass any other identities that might fall under that rubric. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about each of those words, not because I think you don't know what they mean, you probably do, but I want to hear I want you to hear those words in the mouth of your pastor. I want you to hear, perhaps model for you a way that we should and can just be comfortable talking about those people and those words. And forgive me the term those people, I recognize that includes uh, people among us this morning, but I want you to hear this from me. are some who still stumble, who become self-conscious, who feel like sexuality should not be talked about in polite company, in front of children, in church, and I hope you hear from me, it's no big deal. So lesbians are women who are drawn to date, who are drawn into romantic relationships, who might one day marry other women. Gay men are men who are drawn to date, who are drawn into romantic relationships with, who might one day marry other men. Someone who's bisexual, a man or a woman, might date, be in a romantic relationship, might one day marry a man or a woman. And someone who is transgender does not identify as, does not feel like the gender that corresponds with the biological sex that they were born with. Born A boy feels like identifies as a girl, born a girl feels like identifies as a boy. There are ways that people who identify with another gender can receive medical care to more fully embody their true gender, but not all transgender people choose these options. Transgender can also include those who don't identify as either gender neither male nor female, such people are sometimes identify themselves as non-binary. So far, so good. The word queer, which used to be considered a slur against gay people, is now a term used by many LGBTQ, the queer, people to refer to themselves and others in a more general, all-encompassing way. My understanding is that straight people can use the term queer to refer to someone as long as it is being used in a way that is descriptive and not pejorative. And drag queens. Drag queens are a lot in the news these days. Drag queens are men, often gay, but not necessarily, who dress in women's clothes to present an exaggerated, campy, fabulous version of femininity. Drag queens perform gender, literally put on gender and are therefore different than someone who is transgender for whom gender is their permanent identity. Still with me? Okay. None of these ways of identifying oneself suggests any pathology or danger to anyone. While dressing in drag is a choice, being LGBTQ is not. It is simply the way God created some people to be. As an open and affirming church, we not only welcome people of all orientations and identities, we affirm LGBTQ people, as we do straight people, as magnificent creations of the divine. In this Pride Month, I relate to that term pride. In this Pride Month, I am proud that my daughter Abby came out as bisexual at her confirmation retreat at this church when she was 13 years old. She came out to the other confirmands and when we picked her up from church the next day, she came out to me and my wife Lourdes in the car. 
If I remember correctly, we both responded, that's great, Abby, we love you. Is there anything else you want us to know? Nope, she said, that's it. Why come out? Why even talk about one's sexuality? Well, Abby wanted to live openly as who she knew herself to be. If she had feelings for a girl, as she did from time to time, she didn't want to keep it a secret. Why should she? That said, she did not tell everyone, saying that she didn't feel safe sharing this about herself with some people, with particular boys in school, for example. Assuming that we are all created in the image of God, then LGBTQ people tell us something about God too, that there must be aspects of God that is represented in LGBTQ people. Some people know Becca Anderson. Becca Anderson was an intern here at First Church. Uh, following her internship, she joined the church and then responding to a call from God, she went off to seminary and completed seminary and now is in that process of discernment to discern her call to ministry. That's something she's going through with uh, a committee from this church and also from our regional association. Becca Anderson identifies as queer, and she wrote this. She wrote, imagine the body of God. Imagine it with all the genders and races and physical descriptions of the world. God is male and female and both and neither and all. God is black and red and olive and tan. God has hair in long braids, slanted eyes, flat nose, big lips, long beard, curvy body, long arms, short legs. God wears flowing dresses and blue jeans and saris and turbans and tuxedos and lots and lots of jewelry. God has tattoos of every animal of the world and a single heart-shaped stud in their right ear. And God has every ability and every disability in the world. So there's a reason why we set aside a month for LGBTQ people. Too often LGBTQ people, including children and youth, are either invisible or put down, bullied, condemned for who they are. Suicide rates for LGBTQ youth are much higher than in the general population. So the month of June has become a month to celebrate those who don't identify with the majority, whether by who they love or by their gender. So I have a short video to show, and Jonathan will bring that up. I hope you could hear that, um, but I think you got a sense of it. So this video was shown in a nearby elementary school, grades three through five, I believe. I think that sh school shows a video every morning uh, offering a positive message and when appropriate to coincide with special seasons or observances, for example, Black History Month. So this video was shown to coincide with Pride Month out of a recognition that these children with these parents were all represented in that school, not, not specifically, this is a, you know, off the YouTube, but, but, but that these children with these parents were all represented in that school and wanting all the students to hear a message to treat others with kindness and respect. Perhaps you saw it on the news a couple weeks ago. Some parents and others in the community found out that the video had been shown and reacted with intense anger, saying that they hadn't been told that the video would be shown and that this should be a parent's responsibility to talk about if a parent chooses. The anger built 
spilling into a special meeting of the school board, drawing national attention and resulting in hundreds of vile, threatening phone calls to the school, such that the police have now become involved to assure the safety of the children, the teachers, and the staff at that school. So these are our kids, and I mean that literally, not figuratively. We have children and youth in our church who, with their parents, fit every description that I gave of LGBTQ and that we saw reflected in that video. And our church kids are growing up in schools like the one that showed the video and experiencing the hatred and anger that flared in that school. What do we want the message to be for our kids, not just church kids, but in, not just in church, but in their day-to-day -day lives. I would suggest that the message we want our kids to hear is, you are a treasure. You are a treasure. You are a treasure. So in the seventh or eighth grade, I was bullied by a kid who repeatedly called me a gay slur in front of my classmates. In fact, he spread the rumor that I had done something in the shower in the boys' locker room. I think I hardly knew what being gay was at the time, but I sure got the message that it sounded bad, terrible, shameful, humiliating, and that no one would want to be that. So again, what do we want the message to be for our kids, not just in church, but in their day-to-day -day lives? You are a treasure. I would suggest that we voted to be open and affirming 12 years ago, I think, some 12 years ago for exactly times like this, that these are times that we are called to lift our voice. We need to say gay. I'm sure you have heard that there are laws being passed against saying gay in school. Some say that identity is confusing for kids and talking about it might make a child gay. There is no evidence for this. Saying gay is simply a natural way to describe people and relationships that already exist in kids' lives. Two moms, two dads, who is grandma's special friend? We don't need to shout it from the street corner, though we can, or even speak at school board meetings, though yes, that would be great. But in our conversations with our children, just like I'm having with you here this morning, and when we are in a conversation and someone is saying how awful that that school showed that video, we as people of faith who are members of a church that believes that all children are treasures have a responsibility to simply say, I don't agree with that. All children deserve to be treated with kindness and respect. And I want this taught in our schools. Say gay. In 2015, my daughter Abby posted this Father's Day greeting on Facebook. Dear Daddy, happy Father's Day. Hope you have a great day. Today is all about you so you can dance in public and shout fancy at the top of your lungs. I love you so much, you don't even know. Happy Father's Day again. Love, sweet pea. So what a great message for all our fathers on Father's Day, for every LGBTQ person during Pride Month, and for every child of God, gay or straight, no matter your age, to hear each and every day. Be yourself, dance in public and shout fancy at the top of your lungs, and hear God speaking. I love you so much, you don't even know. You are a treasure. You are a treasure. You are a treasure. Amen.
come to the time in our worship as we do each week where we lift up our celebrations and our concerns of our community, our lives, of the world. I'll mention any aloud that are new or updated since last time, um, and then we will pray together over the prayer list, and then I'll invite um, some folks to share aloud. Uh, we celebrate, of course, Jasper and Jasper's baptism and the Holtquist family, the love and grace displayed here today. Uh, we celebrate and give thanks for fathers and fatherly figures today, and we celebrate uh, Juneteenth um, as we uh, remember um, that uh, those parts of the United States that, that and how the United States was, was emancipated in every part and, um, the, and acknowledge the work that continues to need to be done. And of course, uh, we celebrate this Pride Month. Um, we pray strength and healing for Bill Cole, father of Randy Cole. Uh, we pray for Barbara Harris, Pastor George's mom, and for 15-year-old Zoe Howard, uh, for Barbara Spear as she continues to recover, and for Patty Scanlon. Uh, the first prayer under uh, prayers of solace and peace, I'm not going to mention aloud because uh, our children are here and they have, they have not been told, but I ask you to read it and to keep Kelly in your prayers. Uh, for Dick Wilde and the Wilde family uh, following Carla's death, and for our wider church and community, uh, we pray for, um, for peace, we pray for justice, uh, we pray for environmental justice and racial justice. This morning's flowers are given uh, by Chris Barnett to Scott Barnett for in, in celebration of their 35th wedding anniversary, and we celebrate with them. So um, what prayers might you have this day that I ask you, uh, I'd ask you to mention aloud? Yes. Prayers of gratitude for our uh, regional, Southern New England um, conference of the UCC annual meeting was yesterday. There are 600 churches, 1,600 authorized ministers, and 115,000 members strong in supporting the meeting. Saw some of our old friends, Lauren Kirby, Bob Nero was there, Gordon Crouch, who grew up here. Wow, wonderful. Well, hey, thank you for going, reporting back, and uh, you know, being our advocate there and, and uh, representing us well, Meg. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thank you, Meg. Luann. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, prayers for Natalie, for Kate, for your family today. Thank you. March. For Marge's nephew, uh, who uh, has gone into hospice, uh, pancreatic cancer, prayers for, for peace as he moves on from this life to the next, begins that journey, and for his father as well. Thank you, Marge. Joey. Thank you, Joey. Prayer for all fathers. Thank you. Penny. Ken will have his second knee replaced on Tuesday. Prayers for Ken. Set him our best, please.
Well, yeah, and, and uh, he grew up in your family, so you instilled that in him, too. <laughs> and, and also, I have a question. Um, didn't you kind of work for or with NASA at one point? Yeah, so you need help with your screen porch? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I shouldn't give people a hard time during the prayer. So I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. God bless Colin. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Nicole. Yeah. for your parents. Thank you. Yes. Prayers for you, Pauline. Thank you. Mark. Hmm. Prayers for your family. John McBride. Thank you. Jerry. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Rosie. Prayers for your friend. Thank you. Will. We celebrate with them and with you. Wonderful. Yes. Gordon. For my father's one intention. For my stepfather's one surgery. Thank you for it. For your father and stepfather, Gordon and Kenneth. Thank you. Father in law. Mm -hmm. Father Almost got it right. <laughs> Almost. Father and father in law. Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. All right, Sarah. Yeah, um, prayer for sensitivity in family when somebody is going to tell them to keep on a judgment. Mm -hmm. The Lord be with you. Loving God, we lift up our celebrations, our concerns, those spoken aloud, those that are written down, knowing though that you hear them, you receive them, even those offered in silence, even those that are so heavy they weigh us down, we only think them. On this day, we celebrate and we pray for fathers, we acknowledge Juneteenth, we give you thanks, gracious God, for the fathers in our lives. We ask your blessing upon fathers for all who play a fatherly role so they can continue to love and grow as fathers. This Father's Day, we remember the many sacrifices their fathers make for their children and families in the ways both big and small. They lift their children to achieve dreams beyond reach. We remember all those who have helped fill the void when fathers pass early or are absent, grandfathers and uncles, brothers and cousins teachers, pastors, coaches, and the women of our families. For those who are fathers, we ask for wisdom and humility in the face of the task of parenting. Give them the strength to do well by their children and by you. Dear God, on this day before Juneteenth, grant us grace to contend fiercely against evil and to make sure that you help us like those generations before us who resisted the sin of slavery and human, human bondage in any form and form of oppression to use our freedoms to bring justice among people 
and nations everywhere to the glory of your holy name. Eternal Spirit, we thank you for creation and all that sustains it, for the sun that rises every morning, the clouds that bring rain, and the moon in the night sky. Bless us that we may be a blessing to all creation. Heal us, O God, from all that ails us, illness, disease, despair, hunger, thirst, injustice, regret, so much more. Heal us and all creation. And bless our leaders of cities and towns and all who work for the unity and well-being of everyone in all creation. Help us, Lord, to be your disciples, to listen with open ears and heal with open hearts. We pray all of this in the name of the one who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just a, a couple announcements. Um, there are activities bags, activity bags for children in the back for the summer. Um, we are pausing the children's sermon and formal church school, regular church school. Um, so come and take an activity bag. Um, and uh, also you can register for church school, uh, youth groups and confirmation for the fall. All of that information um, is online. Grateful for the ministries of this church. We now give of our gifts and our offerings.
Gracious and loving God, please accept these, our humble gifts. Put them to the service of your mission in the world and the good mission of this church as we continue to seek to draw the circle wide. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now may the spirit of the living God made known most fully to us in Jesus Christ go before you to show you the way, go above you to watch over you, go behind you to nudge you into places you might not otherwise go by yourselves, go beneath you to uphold and uplift you and go beside you to be your strong and constant companion that you may know that you are never ever alone and dwell within you, dwell within you and burn bright in your heart and go forth with God's blessing. Amen.
I am told there is there is 